Uh, sea Change, what a phenomenal series that turned out to be. You've got a very good memory, it's a long time ago. How long? Gee, it'd be 15 years, I think. Wow. Diver right. Dan? That's not me, old cock. That's no, the I know. other guy. That's that the, the other guy one. everyone loves. Now, I was trying to remember. My that. wife, when I came on that show, she said, There's another one you've ruined for me. She didn't watch it when I was on there. Oh, really? No. Uh, Diver Dan, was it you or Diver Dan who was, had the uh, assignation? We had an affair. Or... No, I think you're watching the wrong sea change. Was I? Darren, no. No, you you uh, went on with Diver Dan at any stage. Uh, well, perhaps that's some sort of uh, person's idea of a, of a television show made in heaven. It's not <laughs> mine. And, uh, we, David went and played Diver Dan, and yeah. he was off with Sigrid, and then he shot through. And then I oh, turned that's up, right. and that's then right. I, I mucked around with Sigrid for, for a couple of seasons. Yeah, that's right. It was a nice show, although I went running it down along uh, a beach down at Summers not so long ago, and some guy who's super fit was running up and down and doing all these ridiculous sort of exercises that you do when you're young and fit and you sort of play a lot of footy yeah. sport and I sort of sort of sort of clanking past with my bad knees yeah. thinking I was moving all right you know the glucose means kicking in today it's okay you know and I'm staggering along and he does another series of crazy exercises that he sort of runs up to me and he stops and I think why are you running with me mate so I nodded to him and he looked at me and then he turned around and he went sea change <laughs> he goes a long time ago and he just head off down the beach and I thought you a hole. Yeah, good but good luck to the lad. Speaking of transformations, John Howard, who was in that uh, series of Sea Change, did you ever see him in the club as the star? Yeah, player? man, that was a Fit. great film. I remember Graham Kennedy. I thought was fantastic in that. Yeah. But John Howard. Yeah. When he was young, and, uh, and we, we all we thin. all have our time in a, in the sun. I saw him not so long ago in um, Crookwell, which is uh, uh, in southern New South Wales, and man, he looks like uh, good paddy. Well. I'm not saying anything, but he looked like the like a wild man. But he's a great player, great actor. Yeah. Does a lot of charity work, actually, John. He's a good man. Does he? Yeah, yeah. good on him. And The Club, you're right, it was a good uh, a great Graham film. Kennedy was fantastic in that. I think yeah. it's one of the best performances I think I've ever seen in an Australian film, is that as the club president. As the president. Yeah. And you had Jack Thompson as the coach. Well, you know, yeah. No, I'm not keen on Jack Thompson. Al Casal. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah he was, he's a great actor. Did you see him in a film called... Sunday too far away. Yeah, well, that's the that's my that's my pivotal Jack moment. You Say, know, you, you, you scabs. That's what yeah, you scabs. scabs. And when he's sitting on that ridge, and he's talking about you know being the gun shearer. Yeah, it was, he's a terrific actor. Yeah, and then after he after his outburst, you scabs. One of the blokes behind me goes, "Well, that was piss weak." Yeah, I know. <laughs> you remember that line? <laughs> and they all just crack up. I remember that sort of the one armed with the the, the one they got the chef um the, oh, the chef. It, a shearer yeah, chef. Cook. Where do I'm sat? What skill did I go? Yeah. The shearer chef. <laughs> now the uh, the shearer's cook, drunk on vanilla essence. That's it. <laughs> ah, truckloads of vanilla essence, essence. coming in. Cooking. Yeah. The, yeah, big bloke. That was a good film. Yeah, I think that the cooking that went on to be in Crocodile Dundee. You're kidding me. No, saw Paul Hogan recently. Was he on his live show? His live show. Was it good? It was fantastic. A night with Hogs. I can remember seeing him on New Faces when he played the rubbish bin. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. In the footy socks. Yeah, and stuff. the footy socks and the stubbies and the sort of turn off t shirt. Yeah, that's where it all started for him. And look where it ended. Yeah. Well, well, well he's still going. He's still going. Good yeah. luck to the lad. Now, the book. Yes, of enough course. Enough about the book. Australian entertainment. Well, we could go on forever. Couldn't we? Uh, it's, called <laughs> we the, it's called The Bird Watcher by it William McInnes, but it's a novel. It is a novel. I've written, that's my third novel, I think. It's my third novel. Is yeah, it hard but... to write a book? Well,. I put my computer into a spell check into meltdown because I was educated in Queensland. But no, it sort of is, yeah. You just got to sort of get on with it and just write. But when you start telling stories, it's nice, you know. And so it's a, it's a love story. And, yeah. you know, there's a few other things in there. Like Perry Como turns up and yeah. the Richmond Football Club song. I've Not got... that I'm a Richmond supporter. But I, I like to say I'm a doggies man, but I like to think the the Tigers are a uh, maybe a sort of a, a groovier inner city version of the Bulldogs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they dress a bit better. Yeah. Uh, what <laughs> what what time length does it take to write a book? Me? Well, yes, I don't know. I sign a contract, uh, and they, yeah, I don't know. You, you have a certain end date, but I always, it's usually a little bit like, you know, it arrowheads towards the end, and I just have to sit down and do it. But I write wherever I work, wherever I go. Yeah. So, but it's fun. It's like having the best of both worlds, being able to, you know, acting is the ultimate team sport in a way. Yeah. And then when you're a writer, you just got to sit down and do it. Yeah. And it's turned out okay, and it's doing well, so that's good. 
How yeah. many how many copies do you sell? Because people that write books in Australia, they say it's expensive to publish. Would you like my financial details as well? And where <laughs> you, did you bring an Excel spreadsheet? With well, you? I'll just get it out here right now. <laughs> it's it's, it's almost as big as me. No, I do. All, I'm very cognizant of the fact you don't want to have tickets on yourself, or but I do. All, I do all right. Yeah, good. You know, people like them and. Thank God for that. So it's a nice uh, way to sort of tell stories and earn a bit of coin. And it's also just about sharing with people and telling sort of stories. Yeah. Know. But hopefully they like it. And the bird watcher, you you were taken out to watch birds when you were young. I was. My auntie was a mad birder, and my wife a twitcher. Uh, well, she was a birder. What's the difference? Well, a birder is a birders are people who just love birds, and they go out and they. They have their field lists, but right. they're more environmentalists than anything else as well. But twitchers are people who just live for lists. Um, it doesn't mean they're bad people. They're just like uh, downstream from birders. And there are some people that have uh, bird lists. Uh, they're life lists yeah. they've seen. Then they have uh, a, a sub subculture uh, lists to add to that. Like they have audio visual lists, like birds they've seen on television. Oh yeah. Or birds that their friends have seen. And so it can go quite crazy. Yeah. But it's 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 a passion. So are you a birder or a twitcher? I'm a birder. I'm yeah. a birder. But I mean I think um I did a, a show for the ABC that's on in February about birders and bird watching. I do all sorts of things. I met lots of uh, birders out there and birding groups. And you know that there's people that have a passion, anyone with a passion. You can stand back and say, oh, they're a little bit odd. But people with passion are really important, I think. Yeah. And there are some barking people, but there are barking people everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but I got to do a lot of funny things. I got to collect semen from an emu uh, over in Perth. Serious? Yes, How you do know. You do that? Well, you know, you're sort of lonely in Perth <laughs> and you see a bump into a good looking emu yeah. and you No, it was part of the show. Like there was a CSIRO facility over there where oh. they, um, they're studying emus and this terrific scientist was telling me how to, A, sort of turn on the lady emu, or emu as he called them. An emu. Emu, a lady emu. <clears throat> you have to ruffle the tail feathers. So. Oh, Let me tell you they kick, and he was a little bit slow on giving me that instruction, and, you know, I nearly, well, I wore one in a rather sort of pr uh, painful place. They're not attractive, are they? Well, I don't know. He haven't collected semen from you, Darren, <laughs> but <laughs> actually. Yeah. Until I do. Until you I can't judge. Yeah, don't fair. judge me or my emu. That's a fair call. His name was Blue. Blue I'll never forget emu. him. Yeah. He's got a, they peck a lot, let me tell you. Yeah. But that we digress. Uh, should the Indian miner try and be eradicated from uh, our sky? It's a funny thing you ask, ask me that because one of the stories I did in this show was about this. Well, they call themselves the Snuff Squad of Indian miners, the Canberra Snuff Squad, and yeah. they actively went out to try and uh, you know lower as many of these birds as possible. And that was right across the community. Yeah, know, it was amazing, and they were quite successful. I think you know feral animals. Yeah, why not? Oh, I mean, they're introduced, and they take out they take the nesting spots of sure. the of rainbow lorikeets, the uh, eastern rosella. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, so I think yeah, it's a fair. It's a, the way you sort of you manage the environment. Yeah, I think because they're in, introduced, in a, aren't yeah, they? I yeah, mean, a lot of things are introduced, Stuff. like the the the, the deers. Mm. They're they're terrible. They're in Brisbane and oh God, rabbits. You know, the summers they're out. Foxes. I was down the other day. Foxes. And, yeah. I saw a fox in Footscray. Crossing Footscray Road. Fox Watch. We're with William McGinnis. That's it. There you go. Hey, look, Fox Watch. You've got it all worked out, Darren. Past twelve. Thanks.